all the world a stage, right? You ever heard that term? Well, actually there are specific stages within the world that we really kind of need to know. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, okay? The different types of stages that you can act on and that you probably will be on at some point in your career. We're going to go through the four main ones, which is the proscenium. We're going to talk about the thrust, the arena, and also the site specific. So those are the really main four big juicy ones that you'll probably encounter most. There are a couple other ones that I'll sprinkle in at the very end, but we'll talk about those main four. Then we'll even also talk about little tiny specific acting little tips and tricks that you can do on those particular stages to uh, better flush out your performance, all right? So uh, sit back, relax, get that notepad out, and, um, and let's get it going. So we're going to start off with one of the oldest stages. It's the arena stage, or also theater in the round. Theater in the round was common in ancient theater uh, back with, in Greece and Rome, uh, but it was never really fully uh, explored until uh, the turn, uh, the later half of the 20th century, the 1920s and the 1930s, uh, when the theater of cruelty started to come around. Now, the stage itself... Uh, is the arrangement is is typically round or in a square or or, or diamond uh, shape, and the stage is in the middle of the audience, and the audience is surrounded um, around the stage. If you think of a typical concert or a football match or anything like that, that's technically an arena style stage. The characteristics lead itself to high energy productions, and it is especially uh, flavored by pr productions of classical theater. So what's great about the theater in the round is that it requires no stage current. It also uh, doesn't really typically lend itself to using a lot of scenery, and it allows for the audiences to really utilize their imaginations. Um, you can see this in a lot of different spaces, often in festivals or in outdoor parks uh, and things like that. This type of stage creates a unique and intimate atmosphere and is very good for dramas that require a lot of audience involvement. And usually there are walkways that lead to the stage that the actors utilize as well. Um, but when you're acting on an arena stage, it's always important to, to understand that you can't necessarily follow the classic uh, never turn your audience back to the audience uh, because that really doesn't apply to the arena stage because your back will always be at some point to an audience member so when you're acting remember to use that effect to your advantage and when you want to um, uh, convey a particular moment a dramatic moment or a comedic moment that for matter you can always uh, do a turn of the back or turn of the turn around and face a, a certain type of audience that maybe you've been uh, neglecting for a part of the show now, it's also going to take some skillful blocking that you'll work out with your director, but uh, just as you're acting on the stage, just understand that the whole stage itself is at your disposal. Typically, there's not a lot of sets uh, and a lot of props that you'll use, and, and, and make sure to uh, project as that you'll have to reach a 360-degree um, auditory uh, circumference when you are trying to reach um, all of your audience members. The next stage is the thrust stage. It is a modern revision of Shakespeare's Old Globe Theater stage. And it was designed by Sir Tyrone Gerthen for the Assembly Hall in Edinburgh, Scotland. Now the thrust stage is also known as the platform stage and also the open stage. And it essentially is a hybrid between the arena stage and the proscenium style stage. It extends into the audience on three sides and is connected to the backstage area by its end stage. The end stage is where the actors come and go and that's usually where the entrance and, ex entrance and exits happen. Similar to the arena stage, the thrust stage often intensifies the intimacy of dramatic experience, um, making it so uh, the most vulnerable and most powerful position on stage. One difference though is that the thrust stage allows for the actors to constantly maintain their front forward and facing the audience at all times. They can always lean on the back of the stage because that is um, where no audience are sitting. And um, the thrust stage has the benefit of having a greater intimacy between the 
actors and the audience members more so than the proscenium style. The next and most common stage when people think of theater is the proscenium style stage. And the proscenium stage in the 19th and 20th century distanced the, the audience from the play and it provided a clear frame, which is called the proscenium, behind which the performers uh, and the actors acted out their particular scenes. Now, this proscenium arch, if you will, created a detachment uh, f uh, that, that really separated the the uh, the spectators uh, from the actors and it really um, gives the illusion that the actors are in a world of their own and and that the actors are unaware of the audience's presence now the audience in a proscenium style stage only faces one direction and um, and the, the the imaginary wall between the actors the action happening on stage and the spectators uh, the audience members sitting in the audience that is called the fourth wall and this this word uh, w came about because of this particular type type of stage um, because of the uh, illusion and the uh, distancing effect that this particular stage has so most proscenium style stages have a curtain and uh, the space above some of the proscenium stages may include uh, flyouts where the curtains and scenery and and other supporting um, equipment and the lighting instruments uh, hang. Uh, many theatrical properties and sceneries can be utilized in this particular space and that includes backdrops, curtains, lights, large sets and things like that. Um, uh, these can be used at, at great effect without the risk of of uh, being um, seen by the audience or or or, or getting in the way uh, for quick movements and things like that. The hidden aspect uh, where all the tech happens behind the stage makes it a fan favorite for a lot of productions. The entrances the entrances and exits can be seen more gracefully than an arena or a thrust stage, and um, it can be much more contained and the illusion of theater um, can be much better upheld. Most people will find themselves on a proscenium style stage at some point in their career. And there's a couple acting tips that you should know when on this particular stage. You should know that when on the proscenium stage, if you are ever at a higher level than another actor on this particular stage, that often indicates that you are in a more dominant position. You should also know that uh, when acting on a proscenium style stage, it is almost a two-dimensional plane of acting. So you really want to stay open and keep front-facing forward unless otherwise noted by the director. If someone stands upstage, uh, that they will be perceived as more dominant. This is because you'll have to look away from the audience to connect with them. The next one is crossing. Crossing the stage should only be done if either the director tells you and if uh, he or she does, you should make it with intention. Every movement that you do on stage, you want to make sure that you have a reason why you make a cross or a movement on stage. And the last one, most people also know this as well, is you don't want to upstage your fellow actors. So that means standing in front of them and breaking the audience's eyeline with that particular um, actor, particularly if they have have, uh, lines to say in the play. And last but not least, we have a type of stage called site specific. Now, there are plenty of other different types of stages that we could cover here. For the sake of brevity, I want to only cover these top four. And the last is it definitely needs to be included in there because it's different from all the others and it's called site specific. Now, site specific does not have a particular location. It does not have a particular type of stage. It is literally specific to the site that you decide to perform it. So there are plenty of different examples uh, where famous plays have uh, performed, um, <clears throat> whether it's on a beach or uh, in the forest or uh, uh, different places like that. Uh, one of the more famous ones is actually a production of Waiting for Godot in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Here are some images of the of the set and you can notice the power that having a production of Waiting for Godot could have in a uh, destroyed neighborhood in New Orleans. 
for acting in spe site specific locations. It's really uh, contingent upon where you're going to be performing. That has to do with projection, that has to do with audience facing, and that also has to do with blocking. There's no real tips or tricks I could give for acting in site specific locations. Site specific locations are a little few and far between as they can be hard to secure particular locations to get the funding for them. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, in the uh, in the comments down below, let's do the lesson here. Let's talk about uh, in the comments. Go ahead and put down uh, what your favorite type of uh, stage is. What do you like to watch productions on, and also what do you like to act on? What your preferred uh, stage that you like to use is. Uh, put those in the comments below, and I'll go and reply, and we can have a uh, have a discussion. Uh, regarding the different pros and cons for each stage. Uh, if you haven't done already, please give us a like and share our videos. Uh, spread the wealth to the community if you know any actors or uh, theater makers. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Be nice. Be nice. Don't scratch me. Don't scratch me. Don't scratch me. Ah!